welcome back guys we're talking about the recombination now from now on we'll be talking about the site specific recombination and majorly we'll be talking about the site specific recombination better known as CSSR or conservative site specific recombination now site specific recombination is different than the homologous recombination process because in site specific recombination we use certain enzymes uh, the proteins called serine recombinants one is called serine recombinase or we can use tyrosine recombinase. Now it depends on the name of the amino acid that is present in the active site of that enzyme. And in both ways we know that serine and tyrosine they carry an hydroxyl group in their R, R group right hydroxyl group in the R chain the side chain of the amino acid and that hydroxyl group act as a nucleophile to attack and create break in the double stranded DNA and we can then use that for for the recombination purpose. Now the site specific recombination is very specific because it is telling us the idea that it is specific for a particular DNA. So the site where it will cleave will be specific, right? A specific sequence is there in the DNA which will be recognized by the enzyme and then they will make a cleavage there, okay? So this is an overview of how this process works. We have this double stranded DNA and then we have the protein this in this example the protein is SPO11 whatever now this protein has a serine recombinant structure which has a hydroxyl group in the side chain now with the help of this protein it will load itself and then this hydroxyl group will create break in the DNA then it will initiate the double stranded break by itself once the double stranded break is formed by this SPO now in this case I mentioned serine but actually looking at the structure it looks like it is tyrosine recombinant sorry for the discussion tyrosine because it is having this this group out there benzene ring this aromatic group so tyrosine recombinant so tyrosine recombinant now this hold on to the structure and form a double stranded break once they form the double stranded break in both the strands that is the beauty because you know in this case there will be two DNA this is the site, let's say specific site, site A and site B should add with each other or simply if I draw it with to different color it will be better. So let's say this is a DNA, this is a site A and this is another DNA, site B. Now this idea of this recombination is to cleave both of the DNA to create double stranded DNA, I mean double stranded break in those DNA. Once that create that double stranded break, they create this double stranded break and always that enzyme tyrosine recombinase with the help of a phosphate group, that enzyme always added, this is the enzyme. Similarly, this is the enzyme, and this is the enzyme. So they form the structures by the activation of enzyme in both the G DNA. Once that thing is done, then they will help them to re-ligate between, between themselves. So here they will re-ligate between themselves properly like this. Like this. So then we will get a structure like that which is a recombinant product as you can see. Previously the parent uh, only contains either green or red but now it is a mixture of green and red. So this is the way a uh, site specific recombination works, more easy than recombination of homologous type. The site specific recombination, this conservative site specific recombination is very common in uh, bacteriophage attack towards bacteria because you know bacteriophage is a virus which will attack bacteria. So the idea of bacteriophage usually is to ligate their genome to the genome of bacteria, to ligate their DNA inside the bacterial genome. So let's say here this is the bacterial genome, this is the recombination site in the bacteria which we call a specific site called ATTB, right? Attachment site for bacteria. Similarly, we have another attachment site here for the phage, we call it ATTP. So the phage genome can ligate with bacterial genome with the help of this P and B, ATTP and ATTB site. So they have the specific sequence, they cleave both of the sequence properly, then, then, then cross it, fuse itself up and we get a large unit. And that's the beauty because if two circular genome 
use this strategy to fuse we get a large genome right now these are the three different types of conservative site specific recombination that we can see one is the insertion type where a circular genome can insert into a linear dna so this is the linear dna and this is a circular dna obviously they should have a specific site and with the help of specific site they can embed itself this is very common in case of transposons transposons a transposition of the genetic element from one place to another place of the same dna or the different deletion can also result by the same way a part of the genome can be deleted by circulating so this is say say this is the structure of a dna now this dna wants to get rid of this 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 part this green part so what it will do it will form a structure like this and then this region will fuse and ultimately what it will give it will give a structure like this this is the example of deletion now third case is the inversion where it occurs only with the linear dna where the dna strand can get cleaved and get inverted 180 degree now if it's get inverted b will be here a will be on the opposite side this inversion can also be seen in all this type of conservative site specific recombination they are important in bacteriological purpose you know in bacteriophage infection towards bacteria it is important in transpositions in all many different types of transposition we will see this type of activity and also they are required for the gene conversion gene conversion purpose also okay where we have this this change in the gene sequence out there so now let's look at the structure that should be there for a site specific recombination there is a specific structure because in all this case you can see a play like button present here right on the two side of the play like button there are sequence that are recombination specific so this is the spe recombination specific sequence in the opposite direction they place like that in between there is a gap of the DNA sequence called TAGC site. In all these cases, you will see TAGC, TAGC. So, this is the TAGC site that is present in between the two re recombination recognition site, recombination recognition site or RRS. So, two RRS in two side at the middle, we have that crossover site. This is called the crossover region or crossover site. And this site is separating two recombination re recognition sequence. And that's very very important because they should have this structure for the proper site specific recombination and then the recombinase enzyme either it's a serine recombinase or it's a tyrosine recombinase it will bind with this recombination recombination recognition sequence or rrs they are binding towards rrs okay so once they bound to the rrs then they will initiate the cleavage and all the process afterwards okay now this is how a recombinase, serine recombinase look like. There are different types of recombinase, serine recombinase, you know, tyrosine recombinase. Serine recombinase looks something like this. They are having two different, four different hands like this. So the idea here is first place, the recombinase will bind to the RRS. Recombinase is now bound to the RRS, R1, R2, whatever. So once the recombinase are there, recombinase can attack a backbone of phosphodiester because you know the DNA once DNA is uh, intact form there is a phosphodiester backbone. Now here this serine recombinase with the help of that hydroxyl side chain they act as a nucleophile, nucleophile and they attack that backbone phosphodiester backbone and creates the breakage. How? Because they drag one phosphate away and one phosphate is now added, added here due to that result the phosphodiester backbone gets disturbed, destabilized, so the strand gets broken. So that's the reason how the strand gets broken. In both the case, strand gets broken down. On the other hand, what it creates in the three prime end, they are creating a hydroxyl free group. Now the second stage of this reaction is those three three prime hydroxyl group act as a nucleophile, 
and they will attack. So the hydroxyl nucleophile of this one, let's say here, this one will attack this R1, this, this phosphate of R1. Similarly, the hydroxyl group of this one will attack the phosphate of R3, the crisscross interaction. Once they are interacting, the hydroxyl of the serine or tyrosine recombinase acts as nucleophile to drag one phosphate away to create the breakage in the phosphodiester backbone and that creates a free 3 prime hydroxyl in both the way. Now here the free 3 prime hydroxyl will crossly interact and attack the phosphate of R3. On the other hand, this one will attack the phosphate of R1, ultimately cleaving those R1 and R3 out, otherwise they will be joined properly. Similarly here, the hydroxyl here, this hydroxyl will attack R4, now this hydroxyl will attack R2. R2. So this crisscross interaction will occur all around here, once the crisscross interaction is there. So what they are doing actually, they create a swap. Remember, if they attack the same type of, uh, if let's say this hydroxyl attacks R1 phosphate, there is no meaning for breakage because it will be same strand. The idea here to recombine with other strand. So they create both of the four different fragments. Now, let's say the same region. My hands, I break themselves down. What we left with? I left with two wrists, two fists and two different two arms region. Now the idea here to join two wrists and, and two other arms. So what will we do? We, we When we reseal the thing, will receive in different way, the way we want. So here the way they want is to be cleaved is crisscross way. So the blue will grab the red one to interact, the red one will grab the blue one to interact in the cross manner. So that after the joining, after the second nucleophilic attack, they have a swap of genetic material and that's what we get. Blue with red, red with blue. That's how the recombination of serine protease or tyrosine pro protease is brought about. And that's the idea about recombination because recombination deals with a variety in the genome, change in the genome, new variations should be placed in the genome and the only way it's possible is to grow swapping things or crisscross things. This is the tyrosine recombinase ma machinery. The machinery for tyrosine rec recombinase is slightly varied but the chemical property is the same. Again the tyrosine also have that uh, group here and a hydroxyl group at the end. That hydroxyl group acts as a nucleophile at the very beginning, creates a double stranded break, right? And also creates 3 prime hydroxyl. In this case, they creates a 5 prime hydroxyl instead of, instead of a 3 prime. As you can see, tyrosine creates a 5 prime hydroxyl instead of a 3 prime hydroxyl that we see earlier. This is the only way when we see a 5 prime hydroxyl condition. But whatever it is, if it's a 3 prime hydroxyl or 5 prime hydroxyl, if there is a hydroxyl group coming out from a phosphate backbone or phosphate group, that hydroxyl has a lone pair electron acts as a nucleophile. That can also act as a nucleophile. So in tyrosine recombinase, what they do, in case of serine recombinase we have seen, they break both of those DNA strands in two different parts. First, then they crisscross and join them, swapping things. But in case of tyrosine recombinase, they first cleave the one strand at a time. So there are two DNA strands, but they cleave one strand for both of the DNA set. One strand from the blue, one strand from the red. And then they recombine those red with blue, okay, and formation of a branch point or holiday junction as we all know. Second thing is with the other strand. Then they go for another strand, use the same strategy, break them down, then recombine. So ultimately what will they form here? Again, this will recombine with, with themselves to form two different, as you can see, two different, sorry, this one and this one. So what we'll have two different holiday junctions made, this one and this one, in case of tyrosine recombinase, two different holiday junctions made. Once the two different holiday junctions are made, then they will separate them each other because remember in this case, there is no strand invasion. So we don't need any enzyme to clip them. They can easily drag them and they can be separated properly. Okay. That's the way they can do this process. Okay. But remember in this case, they have generated 5 prime hydroxyl and they are providing this process one after another, one strand at a time in case of tyrosine recombinase. On the other hand, in case of serine recombinase, they break both of the DNA strands down in two different 
parts, then they do the job. Okay. Now, the idea of why it is re re required, I have told you that a bacterial genome can be fused with a bacteriophage genome. It is all about integration. A bacteriophage has certain materials inside in the genome which will oh, hijack the machinery of bacteria. So, if it delivers its genome inserted inside the bacterial genome, they are hijacking the bacteria because the bacterial genome will be replicated according to the bacterial replication process. While they replicate their own genome, bacteria accidentally because as the viral genome is inside of the bacterial genome, it will also replicate that genome, also transcribe that genome, also translate that mRNA to proteins and some of those proteins will generate which will kill the bacteria itself and virus will come off. Okay. So, here that is one of the strategy, these are the two sites for the specific recombination, one circular DNA, one linear DNA, site recombination site RRS there. So, then they will fuse with themselves and we will get a structure like that. Now, once we form the structures like that, what we will have? We have certain sequences where we have multiple DNA because now this is the larger DNA where we have multiple type of source for the DNA. That is why we call it a heteroduplex DNA because it contains the DNA from different source, hetero and the joints where they start joining two DNA from two different source is called a heteroduplex joint. Okay. In a sense, this is all about kind of site specific recombination. Probably I will find some animation and to help you understand the Holly disjunction resolution and all these things. But I think it is kind of enough to understand about the uh, process of uh, holiday model, I mean the homologous recombination as well as the site specific recombination. So, I think that is helpful. If you like the video, please subscribe and hit the like button. Share this video with your friends. Thank you.